All right, let's get started. Everybody who thinks this is like a big talk about artificial intelligence, like, no, there's not a single robot video in here. But this is absolutely about bias, trust, and doing good. So it's been a really, really interesting uh, path for me. I, I came from a liberal arts degree. I did a psychology degree. And then I did, as I mentioned, a PhD in artificial intelligence. And uh, well, actually, and what I mentioned was I was a programmer professionally, paid off my undergraduate debts. Then did a PhD in artificial intelligence because I wanted to do science. I wanted to understand how brains worked. But also, I was suddenly at MIT with a psychology degree, right? <laughs> and I figured out that my uh, competitive advantage was I did systems engineering. And so my PhD is actually in making more human-like intelligence, making it easier to build human-like intelligence. So that's how I got where I am. And so this, this talk is going to be not about that. This talk is going to actually be about the answers that we've got in the last few years. So in the last 10 years or so, actually, it was the British in 2010 that found they put together the first national level soft law about the ethics of artificial intelligence. Um, it was called the, uh, the EPSRC Principles of Robotics, in fact. We were still talking about robots a lot then. Um, so we'll talk about that in a minute, actually. Uh, so since then, I've been increasingly called on to do policy, and now I'm finally a professor of policy. So that's my new job. Um, and so that's what I'm going to talk about now. What, what, what it is, the science that's underlying the policy that we're recommending and the policy we're doing. All right? OK, let's do this thing. OK, so a starting point of this talk is that ethics isn't just fluff. It isn't just discourse, although discourse is really important. That's what we're here for. Um, but it's the way we hold our society together. Now, one of the things I just saw, I, was, I don't know if you guys were with Churchland. It was a fantastic argument about what consciousness was. Because for one of the philosophers, it was exactly, it meant it's what you're aware of, right? And for another one, it was you know, the this, this psychological phenomena. And so they were at loggerheads for that reason, right? So there are other definitions of ethics, but this is the one I'm going to be using. It's every means by which we hold our society together, OK? So it's a form of policy, and it can be improved with social, with, with scientific understanding. That's the, the, the posture that I'm bringing to you. OK, AI is not an enormous exception. A lot of people are saying everything has changed. I don't think it's just because of artificial intelligence, although a lot has changed. Um, but I think actually more of it's about the digital revolution. But we had similar revolutions with other technologies before. And so that's what you're going to see a lot in this first 45 minutes, is we're going to talk a bit about how this relates to previous revolutions and how we can learn from those. OK, so as such, AI, it's an extension of the way we communicate and the way we think. And as such, it folds into how we govern. It is both one of the things we will be using to govern and also one of the things we now have to deal with and govern. Okay? We are making interesting progress in updating our ethics because of the fact that we've learned things about artificial intelligence. And by that, I would include some of the discussions we've had earlier today about democracy, right? So we know more about democracy when we see how it's changed when you throw in digital. Right? That tells us what some of the problems are. OK, so this is, I mentioned before, the, the British principles of, of uh, robotics. They're remarkably similar to these. OK, these are the OECD slash G20 principles of AI. Now, the, um, the G20 didn't sign up to everything the OECD did, but notice who's in the G20? China. So these are things that China has agreed, as well as um, you know, the OECD is pretty much like the EU plus a few other people, right? <laughs> so, that's the, uh, so the AI should be benefit people and the planet by driving inclusive growth, sustainable development, and well-being, right? Uh, AI should be designed in a way that respects the rule of law, human rights, democratic values, and diversity. And they should include appropriate safeguards, for example, enabling human intervention where necessary, to ensure a fair and just society. OK? There should be transparency and responsible disclosure around AI systems to ensure that people understand when they are engaging with them. That's totally confusing. I will tell you they mean when people are engaging with the artificial intelligence systems. Hey, French. The, the French are the chairs of the OECD. Uh, anyway, AI systems must function in a robust, secure, and safe way 
throughout their lifetimes and potential risks should be continually assessed and managed. This is one of the great innovations uh, recently of uh, EU regulations that uh, you have to have your systems have to be cyber secure for their expected lifetime. You can't just have people hacking into them, like if you buy a light bulb or something. And, and you know, anyway, I could go on forever about everything. Sorry about that. Organizations and individuals developing, deploying, or operating AI systems should be held accountable for proper functioning in line with the above principles. All right. In, in, the, in the British version of this, what we said was that the owner of the robot should be attributed, just like with a car. You've got to know who it is that's responsible for its operation. And this is, a, as in general, these are similar to the British principles, but expanded and uh, root, more rooted in human rights and sustainability, but, but very, otherwise very similar. Okay, so what are these about? <laughs> They're about being human-centered, just, transparent, safe, and accountable. Those are the five core concepts. And so we've got these, we've got all these countries signed up to do it, and we've also got the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. And now I'm actually, again, this is unbelievable, I was in Germany for five months and they nominated me to the Global Partnership for AI, okay? So this thing, which is basically G7, plus interesting additions, including India, isn't that? Um, Everything we do, we have to show that it complies with the OECD principles and the, and the Sustainable Developing Goals. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.